So now we're going to do an end wall. End wall is whenever your panels are running up into a wall. So here's the direction water is flowing. Your ribs are running up into it. So this could be brick, might be siding. In this case, it's new construction, so this would normally be wrapped with Tyvek or something like that. Now, this shouldn't be confused with sidewall, which we'll also get to. So just keep in mind, you'd want to know what you're actually talking about when you order, because the trims are very different, and we wouldn't want to get uh, the wrong part to you. All right, so Dave, when we install this, we're going to use Z-Trim again, right? That's right. And Z-Trim is a fantastically versatile trim. It's one of the more important trims that we're going to use on the SL16 installation. It can be used to attach the final trim for end walls, side walls, gable trim, hips. Uh, so it's used quite a bit. So we're going to focus on the Z-Trim for just a moment. You'll, you'll notice that there's paint on one side and primer on the other. It's very important that when you're installing the Z-Trim that the paint on, always be on the visible side so that when you look up at the roof you have panel and you have a continuous finished paint visible to the naked eye. So this Z-Trim we use between the ribs and we attach it to the roof and then we attach the final trim to the Z. We have the option of using pop rivets or we can use stitch screws and for this particular detail we're going to use stitch screws because we've already shown you the use of pop rivets on previous videos. The Z-Trim is delivered to the job site in master lengths and then you field cut it for installation between each panel. In some cases, for example, on this first panel, we have a gable trim that is sticking out into the panel, so you'll have to adjust the width or the length of the Z-Trim accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna mark the Z-Trim, cut it, we're gonna come back and install it so that we can install the end wall trim using stitch screws. The cutting of the Z-Trim is straightforward. You can see my pencil marks where I've had it up on the roof and I've made the measures to fit in between the panel and the gable trim. So cutting it's pretty straightforward. I just snip through, snip through, and it's gonna bend. And once I've made the bend, I'm just gonna cut up here. Now we have a finished Z-Trim, which we're gonna take over to our project and install between the panel rib and the gable trim. We've cut our Z-trims, and before we install them, we need to know where to place them on the panel. In order to do that, we're gonna use the end wall flashing as a guide. So I'm gonna take the end wall flashing, put it in place, and I'm gonna use a pencil or a Sharpie to mark the tops of the ribs and the gable trim, just so I know where to put those, put those Zs. So now that we've cut our Z-Trim, the next thing to do before we install it is make sure that we apply tape sealant to the underside so that we have a watertight seal between the Z-Trim and the top of the panel. I'm going to place the Z-Trim so that the leading edge is just about a quarter or half an inch behind the marks that I made. And that way, by placing it slightly behind the lines, we make sure that it doesn't stick out from beyond the end wall flashing. Now that we have the Z-Trim in place, the next thing to do is fasten it to the roof deck and we can do that using either a pancake head fastener or a neoprene washer fastener. Both are fine, just make sure that you thread the tape sealant with your, with your fastener. So we do one in the center and then one on each side. You can see that we have the Z-Trim installed on each panel. I want to point out a couple of important things. One of them is that you'll see that you have holes where the Z-Trim joins each panel or the trim on the gable. We want to fill that using a caulk, a urethane-based caulk that we would just fill here in the corners so that water can't get behind the Z-Trim. You use a standard caulking gun and a standard sealant. Make sure that it's a urethane-based sealant. You don't want to be using silicones as they can they can eat away at the, at the paint surface on the metal panel. Now that the Z-Trim is installed, we can go ahead and install the end wall flashing. So we're gonna go ahead and put it into place. We're not gonna fasten it down just yet because if you see here, I've let it overhang the gable trim by approximately one inch on either side. And that's because I wanna fold it down. So I'm gonna take my pencil, I'm gonna make a quick mark on, this, on each gable. I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna fold it down one inch before we install it.
So what I've done is I've prepared the two ends of the end wall flashing. In this particular case, they're overhanging a gable trim on either side, and you can see here that I've just folded it down by one inch, and that's to keep water from rolling between the top of the gable trim and the end wall flashing. Before we install the end wall flashing, we have to apply tape sealant to the top of the Z trim so that we have a watertight barrier between the end wall flashing and the top of the Z. So the final thing to do now is install the end wall trim. We have our Z trim installed. We have tape seal on top of the Z trim. We're gonna go ahead and install this, put it up against the wall. You can see what a nice clean look it provides. We have a one inch bend down on either gable and we're gonna go ahead and fasten this using stitch screws. The alternative that you can use is pop rivets. So with the end wall flashing in place, I'm gonna go ahead and use stitch screws to attach it to the Z trim and to the gable trim. I'm gonna go ahead and install one between each panel directly in the center. And what's very important is that you make sure that you grab the Z channel that's below. And you wanna make sure that you're in the outside leg of the Z channel so that the fastener shank comes through on top of the panel and not behind the Z channel. So you can see that the shank of the fastener is visible. It's important to try and blow away the metal shavings. And there you have a Z trim and an end wall flashing that have been joined using a stitch screw. In this case, we've gone against new construction. Normally this wall would have a house wrap on it like Tyvek, or in an existing construction, uh, you might have siding, whether it be vinyl or wood, you could have brick. All of them have slightly different installation methods. And in some cases, you might actually have to fasten the end wall to the brick or whatever siding it is that you're coming up against. The last thing to do on this particular detail where we have exposed fastener panel and exposed fastener on the trim is to put a couple of screws into the gable trims to keep them nice and tight so that the wind doesn't pull at them. And we'll go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna put a fastener into the gable trim just down here towards the eave. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we're done here. <laughs> 